AEW has a very large roster that goes very deep with over 100 wrestlers employed and on their roster page. And with this comes wrestlers who get very limited TV time, but it also comes wrestlers who go long periods of time without seeing TV, and there are many wrestlers who have not been seen or heard from in AEW in a very long time, and today we're going to discuss a few of those cases, so like the video and let's talk about it. Let's talk about the missing wrestlers of AEW. Stu Grayson is an interesting case because he was technically the first AEW wrestler ever to be fired and then rehired and returned to the company. But we'll get there eventually. Stu Grayson first appeared for AEW on their first ever show, Double or Nothing 2019, alongside Evil Uno as the Dark Order, where the crowd had absolutely no idea who they were. And eventually and over time, the Dark Order would grow as a stable, and while they were still a jobber stable for the most part, throughout the months the fans would get more on board, as they established themselves as a cult stable and they'd recruit other members of the roster to join the group, like Anna Jay, John Silver, Alex Reynolds, Alan Angels, Preston Vance, Colt Cabana, and of course, Mr. Brody Lee. Mr. Brody Lee was of course the leader of the Dark Order, he was the exalted one and he held the TNT title and had an awesome reign with the TNT title but he tragically passed away in late 2020 and after the unfortunate passing of Mr. Brody Lee, the Dark Order would organically turn face as the fans couldn't boo them after they lost their leader. And following this face turn, Stu Grayson and the Dark Order would enter the most successful period of their time in All Elite Wrestling and that was when they got involved with the Adam Page versus the Elite storyline in 2021. They aligned themselves with Hangman Page after trying to recruit him to the group after his fallout with the Elite and they were constantly there for him and this led to multiple matches with the Dark Order facing off against the Elite in different combinations of wrestlers and even picking up a win here and there. But without a doubt the best though was when they teamed with Adam Page in a 5v5 elimination match against the Elite where they all dressed as cowboys. This was awesome. And after Hangman Page finally won the world title at Full Gear 2021 from Kenny Omega to finish the storyline, the Dark Order were right there to celebrate with him, and no matter what, the Dark Order will always be a pivotal part of the Elite vs Adam Page storyline. However, Page winning the world title came with a downside for the Dark Order because now there was no need for the Dark Order to continue being aligned with Hangman. The fans just wanted to see a Hangman world title now, and the Dark Order didn't need to be there, and they would start to fade away and fall into irrelevancy. In fact, following the conclusion of the storyline in 2021, Stu Grayson would only have two TV matches in the entirety of 2022 for AEW. And the Dark Order would start dropping like flies as members would start leaving the group as well as leaving the company. Company. Anna Jay left to join the Jericho Appreciation Society, Preston Vance joined LFI, Alan Angels left AEW to Impact Wrestling, but not before Stu Grayson left AEW due to contract expiry. In May of 2022, after only one Dynamite and one Rampage appearance all year, it was revealed that Stu Grayson had left the company after his contract expired, and though AEW had tried to keep him, the two weren't able to come to terms, and so Stu Grayson was gone from AEW. Stu Grayson would return to the Indies for some time, but on the March 17, 2023 episode of Dynamite in his home country of Canada in Winnipeg, Stu Grayson returned to team with Adam Page and Evil Uno in a loss to the Blackpool Combat Club. And though it seemed like just a one-time appearance, it was announced afterwards that Stu Grayson was all elite once again and he had returned officially to AEW. He'd have a match the next week on Dynamite against Moxley and also face El Phantasmo at Forbidden Door that year on the pre-show in a very random match. But the show was in Canada, so fair play, they just wanted him on the Canadian card. But this was also his last match and appearance in AEW. As shockingly, in June of 2023, he would leave the Dark Order and go to Ring of Honor to join the Righteous. It was surprising, but it was a welcome move, and Stu Grayson could be a good asset for Ring of Honor. However, only after a month, Stu Grayson would stop appearing with them, and when the Righteous made their way onto AEW TV, for whatever reason, Stu Grayson was nowhere to be seen with them. And he's not wrestled for Ring of Honor since July 2023 on the Death Before Dishonor pay-per-view show. And he's active, he's not injured, so I have no idea why they don't want to use him. It's truly a peculiar sequence of events. Why was he rehired if there was nothing for him? Did Tony Khan change his mind on him or something? At this point, who knows if we ever see Stu Grayson on AEW or Ring of Honor ever again.
Anthony Agogo was announced to have signed for AEW on the 26th of October 2019, and Anthony Agogo, if you don't know, is a former British boxer who boxed at a pretty high level, competing at the Olympics and Commonwealth Games and finishing his career with an 11-1 record. He retired from boxing due to being registered blind in 2019 and looked to explore other industries and so started training to be a professional wrestler and would end up at the Nightmare Factory School run by Cody Rhodes, of course. And when Agogo was announced to be signed for AEW, it was made to be a big deal as he was announced as AEW's first ever developmental wrestler. A big move for AEW and a surprising move for AEW as Anthony Agogo wasn't the kind of guy you'd expect AEW to sign at this time, but it seemed as though Cody saw something in him and so he was now all elite and seemingly big things were coming. Agogo would debut on the 31st of March 2021 Dynamite, attacking Cody Rhodes and aligning with QT Marshall's factory stable. A match between himself and Cody Rhodes was made and scheduled for Double or Nothing 2021, and this has to be one of the worst built feuds in AEW history. This feud of course featured the terrible weigh-in segment, where the scale didn't work, with Paul White doing the weight, and it was just the most awkward thing ever. And then the match itself at Double or Nothing 2021 was nothing exciting and quite boring, as Cody Rhodes picked up the win in a match where Anthony Agogo probably could have used the win a bit more than him. He'd have one more match after this, however he would then be out of action for six months due to having to get an eye surgery, and when he came back, his AEW career was pretty much done. Since his return in December 2021 on an episode of Dark, that's the only place he ever wrestled. He's not had a match on AEW TV once since then. He was relegated to Dark where he just did random squash matches and multi-man tags every week alongside the Factory, who were nothing but jobbers by this point. And eventually, Agogo's Dark appearances would slow down and he would make his last AEW appearance to date on the 20th of September 2022 Dark, and when Dark got cancelled in 2023, he was left with nowhere to wrestle, and as you can guess, he hasn't been seen on AEW TV or a broadcasted show since. The last thing he did for AEW was wrestle a Dark and untaped match at a collision taping last November. For whatever reason, they don't even want to use him in Ring of Honor, and at the moment, Agogo only occasionally wrestles for British promotions, but is still signed to AEW, and I have a feeling that we won't see him again in AEW. AEW seemingly just doesn't see anything in him, and AEW's first developmental wrestler seems to be a failure of a project. Paige Van Zandt was an interesting signing for AEW. She was the first MMA fighter to sign to the company and give a go at wrestling. But was she any good? And where is she now? If you don't know who Paige Van Zandt is, well, like I said, she was an MMA fighter who was best known for her time in the UFC. She had some star power to her in the UFC and was clearly liked by the higher-ups there. However, she was never skilled enough to be a contender for championships or anywhere near the top of her division. And after Paige left UFC in mid-2020, she finished her MMA career with a record of 8 wins and 5 losses, with her July 2020 loss to Amanda Ribas in round 1 on UFC 251 being her last MMA fight to date. And now in free agency, Paige Van Zandt of course looked to explore other options, and one of those was of course professional wrestling, as in September 2021, she began making appearances for AEW. And these appearances were of course as a part of American Top Team alongside Dan Lambert and other MMA fighters, who were feuding with Chris Jericho and the inner circle. And as an AEW fan, I gotta say, I wanna totally forget this feud ever happened. It was dreadful. But of all the MMA fighters on TV for the storyline, Paige Van Zandt absolutely stood out the most and seemed the most natural and people could definitely see a future with her getting in the ring. She was yet to have a match on AEW, but on the February 2nd, 2022 Dynamite, Paige Van Zandt confronted Brandi Rhodes and teased that she could be debuting against her. However, this angle was dropped because the next month, Cody and Brandy left AEW unexpectedly. Dang. Despite this though, there were still plans for Paige seemingly as on March 4th she was announced as All Elite and officially signed to AEW. Then 5 days later, on the March 9th episode of Dynamite, she attacked Ty Conti before costing her boyfriend Sammy Guevara his TNT title match with Scorpio Sky, and this would lead to Paige Van Zandt's one and only match in AEW in the most random pay-per-view match ever, as at AEW Double or Nothing 2022 it was herself, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page against Ty Conti, 
Sammy Guevara and Frankie Kazarian. It was a fine six person tag match, it was whatever, and honestly though, it was a good debut match for Paige Van Zandt considering it was her debut. She looked good, and it was definitely something to build on. She did some impressive moves, took some good bumps, and it was a good first showing as her team got the victory. But as I said earlier, this was her only match. In fact, it's also the last time she's been seen in AEW, as since this match, she's not been in AEW once, and who knows if she'll ever be seen again. Maybe her wrestling career was just a one and done. That's it from me guys, let me know what AEW wrestlers you can also think of that you just haven't seen in a while and you're wondering what happened to them, and maybe I'll make a video on them in the future too. Like this video, subscribe for more future wrestling content, I'll see you on the next one, goodbye, and keep on rolling.